Dr. Ryder, Maria writes, have you ever been to the odd-shaped room? The short answer to your question, Maria, is no. I've never had the pleasure. I've talked to many who have, due to the nature of my work and the fact that I live in the city. Chicagoans love to tell me their own tales of the fabled bar. For those of you who are unaware, there's an infamous drinking establishment here in Chicago. One whose door will only open for you. Once. Will only appear for you. Once. And never again. The odd-shaped room might materialize anywhere in the city. All who visited describe it as busy but never crowded. There's always seats available at the bar, in private booths or tables scattered about the floor. Several archetypal characters make frequent appearances across hundreds if not thousands of witness statements about their visits to this singular place. Of course, there's the bartenders themselves, one a stout, red-haired man in his mid-fifties with a faint Irish accent, the other a tall, Turkish woman, somewhere between her late twenties and early thirties. The red-haired man will offer you beer or whiskey, but nothing else if you approach him. The Turkish woman, on the other hand, will offer to make you a cocktail. The cocktail she makes you've never heard of and will not be able to find anywhere else in the world. You must be careful when you first approach the bar. Whoever you get drinks from first will be your bartender for the rest of your time there. The other will refuse to serve you. Many in Chicago know as much as I've told you so far. And so many make the mistake of walking up to the Turkish woman and asking for a cocktail. I say mistake, not because something miserable will befall you for this decision. No, simply because the choice isn't made with all the information available. If you want your one and only experience in this magical place to be about a singular pleasure that can be experienced only once, then by all means ask the Turkish woman for a drink. But like many, if you stumble your way into the odd-shaped room with a problem weighing you down, then consider asking the red-haired man for either a beer, glass of whiskey, or both as he's less distracted by the beverages he supplies. He tends to be a patient and sympathetic listener. Many folks credit life-changing decisions they've made from epiphanies they had while talking with the red-haired bartender. There are others in the bar, too, who are likely not real, or not real in the way you and I are. We usually label such beings as archetypes, though what they're archetypical of is unknown. There's an elderly man in a booth with a backgammon board. If you choose to spend your evening playing him and win, you'll likely live over a hundred years. At least there's eight such documented cases. If you lose, is there a consequence? Is your life made shorter? Who's to say? There's a young woman who sits alone at a table with a book and a club soda. Should you buy her a drink, any drink, other than what she currently has, she'll offer to read the lines on the palm of your hand. Be warned, though. Her reading will be accurate. There's many other such archetypes who haunt the odd-shaped room. Especially if you live in the city, I encourage you to learn about them to prepare for your own possible encounters. I'll leave it to you to discover the rest. However, I'll finish with one warning. Beware the woman with white hair and almond eyes. The bar is L-shaped and she'll always sit near the corner at the top of the L. If you speak to her, if you make eye contact with her, she may follow you out of the bar. I won't say what would then happen, but I assure you, it wouldn't be pleasant. Thank you for listening to A Voice from Darkness. 
We have new exclusive content available on our Patreon. We'll also be releasing new episodes on our main feed within a few weeks. Until then, I'm Jack Reese.